a podcast that brings a fresh perspective to the distant past. Join hosts Jen McMenemy and Jenny Williamson as they delve into fascinating topics like the use of war elephants in ancient battles, the enigmatic role of mythology in shaping ancient cultures, and the mysteries surrounding ancient natural disasters. And recent episodes like Berserkers on the Battlefield and Catholic Werewolves showcase the podcast's clever knack for blending educational content with fantastical stories. Now, I must warn you, Ancient History Fangirl is geared towards adults and, as such, contains subject matter that may not be suitable for younger smarty pants. So please, listen at your own discretion. But if you're looking for a lively and enlightening exploration of the ancient world, tune in to Ancient History Fangirl wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey there, smarty fans. Have you ever wondered about the lives of kings, queens, royals, and other famous or infamous characters from history? Well, if so, have I got the podcast for you. History Tea Time brings history to life with captivating and informative stories that are perfect for adults and older smarty pants. Host Lindsay Holiday narrates her super detailed research on a variety of fascinating topics in an easy-to-follow style. From the hidden stories of Henry VIII's secret children to the dramatic lives of the Romanov sisters, History Tea Time uncovers it all. Plus, it delves into modern royal practices like coronations and succession rules, placing them in a historical context. With over 70 awesome episodes averaging 30 to 40 minutes, they're the perfect length for a commute or a relaxing break. Tune into History Tea Time on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform for a delightful journey through the past. Hey, Smarty Pants, I see you listening out there. And that's good, because this episode is all about sound effects. And everything you're about to hear is part of a game. So listen closely. You'll be glad you did. Bonjour, monsieur. May I get you something to drink? Hot chocolate. Extra hot. Marshmallows on the side. Oui, monsieur. Oh, Rick. Rick, darling, here you are. We must get to the airport. Our plane leaves in less than an hour. Ilsa, can't you see I'm sipping my cocoa? Ah, smooth. But, Rick... Bonjour, madame. May I get you something to drink? A cocoa for the lady. Oui, monsieur. No, we don't have time. Nothing for me, thank you. Oui, madame. Rick, darling, please hurry. We are going to miss our flight. You're finished. Good. Let's go. Hang on. I just need to finish knitting these socks. Knit on the plane. Come on. I'm coming. Just as soon as I finish practicing the accordion. This is unbelievable. Are you even listening to me? Sorry, I had headphones on. Three, if you don't stop this nonsense, I'm leaving without you. Okay, I'll pay for the check and we'll go. Waitress. Would you like to see a dessert menu? Ah, absolutely. That's it. I'm leaving. Taxi! Goodbye, Three. I'll never forget you. Oh, well. We'll always have... Psst. What's up, kids? Help Rick finish his sentence. Where will they always have? Where did this scene take place? Was it A. Paris, France? Bonjour. B. The Jersey Shore? Yo, let's go to the beach. C. The lost underwater continent of Atlantis? Or D. The moon? Neil, this is Houston. Loud and clear. Break, break. If you said Paris, congratulations. Oh, well. We'll always have Paris. So, why did you say Paris? Because of the accents, music, and sound effects, right? Yes! Next question. What kind of place was Rick in? Was it A, a bowling alley? B, a sidewalk cafe? Or C, the gorilla cage at the zoo? Did you say a sidewalk cafe? Yes! Good job. There's just one thing. While the scene may have been set in a sidewalk cafe in Paris, France, that's not where the scene was recorded. Everything you heard, from the dishes, to the hot cocoa, to the knitting, and accordion, was actually recorded in a teeny, tiny, windowless sound booth 3,624 miles away in Brooklyn, New York. Hey, I'm walking here! So, why did we record in a New York sound booth? 
instead of Paris. Um, well, aside from not having the budget to fly to France, hire actors, marshmallows on the side. Thank you. Next. And rent an outdoor cafe. Sometimes fake sounds more real than real sounds. Whoa. It's what people in show business call Foley art. Now, Foley is just a fancy term for the creation of everyday sound effects that are added to movies, TV shows, podcasts, or any entertainment programs to help make the story come alive. It's alive! And if you stick around, we'll teach you some of the tricks of the trade so you too can become a master Foley artist yourself. Listen up. It's time to make some noise on... Who's smarted? Who's smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science or history? Listen up, everyone. We make smarting lots of fun. But who's smarted? Hey, kid, let's play a quick game. All you need to play is your ears and your imagination. Ready? Feast your ears on this. It was a dark and stormy night. Actually, it was a dark and quiet night. Just kidding. It was a hot summer day at the beach. Cowbunga dude. No, it was a jazzy tap dancing number. Actually, it was a three-ring circus. Welcome one, welcome all. Fine. It was a cascading kaleidoscope of clinking, clanging clatter. All right. Now, here's the question. Were you able to picture the scenes as I was describing them? Yeah. Of course you were, smarty pants. Okay, let's try it again. Only this time, we're going to change a few small things. Ready? Here we go. It was a dark and stormy night. Welcome one, welcome all. Actually, it was a dark and quiet night. Just kidding. It was a hot summer day at the beach. No, no, it was a jazzy tap dancing number. Cowbunga tune. Actually, it was a three-ring circus. Fine, it was a cascading kaleidoscope of clinking, clanging clatter. So, was it still easy to picture the scene? Or was it much harder to imagine now that the sounds didn't match up with the words? Mm, harder. Hmm, why is that? Beats me. Well, your brain is constantly trying to fill in gaps of information to understand the world around you. So when I say something like, it was a dark and stormy night, your brain immediately makes a mental image of what you know about dark and stormy nights. And if the sounds that match those words make sense, your brain can fill in the gaps pretty easily. But if the sound and words don't match, like when I said, it was a hot summer day at the beach, and you heard this, your brain doesn't know which image to focus on. Oh, no! The word beach or the sound of the tap dancing. Which, while pretty funny sounding, is also pretty confusing. And that's where a Foley artist comes in. Ooh. But don't just take my word for it. You can hear for yourself right after this quick break. Hey, I'm Johanna Wagstaff. And hi there, I'm Rohith Joseph. And we're asking for 10 minutes of your day to go through the 10 things that the UN recommends we can all do when it comes to climate change. Please don't leave. No. A and also the things <laughs> aren't new. We are just wired to not do them. We promise you to help you figure out your brains and you and your people can make better choices to combat climate change. 10 Minutes to Save the Planet is available now on CBC Listen and everywhere you get your podcasts. Join Hoda Kotb for a brand new season of her podcast, Making Space. I feel this season is more personal to me. Uplifting conversations with television host Maria Menounos, the office star and author Rain Wilson, and more. All of our guests provide something special, every single one. Come with me on this journey and I promise you'll leave stronger than when you started. New episodes of Making Space with Hoda Kotb are released every Wednesday. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Follow me. Shh, quiet, kid. We're on the movie set of a big summer blockbuster. See if you can tell what kind of movie it is just from the sound effects. So, what do you think? 
Is it a romantic comedy? Hmm. Maybe a documentary about penguins? Um. Oh, I know. A biography about Ben Franklin. Where's my kite? Nah. If you guessed it was an action-adventure movie about superheroes saving the world, you're right. You could probably even picture the scene. But the cool thing is, there is no scene. What? It's just a bunch of sound effects layered together by a Foley artist. Wow! Come on, let's go get a closer look and listen for ourselves. Excuse me, I couldn't help overhearing your Foley work on the new movie. Sounds great. Thanks. I think it still needs a few more... You're the expert. So, how do you make the sounds in a movie or TV show? Great question. After the movie's been shot, they send the footage to Foley artists, like me. My job is to take the visual and make sure the sounds we create match the picture and help tell the story. Ah, so you just recreate whatever sounds you see? Sometimes. Like when it's something simple, like footsteps walking down the street. But some sounds... You can't recreate in a studio. For those, we use all kinds of tricks to make your ears hear something that really isn't there. Oh, yeah? Like what? Well, I could tell you. Or you could just listen. See if you can tell what this is. What do you think? Does it sound like fire? Take another listen. Yep, sounds like a roaring, crackling fire. There's just one thing. It's not fire. Whoa. Nope. It's just a small piece of cellophane wrapping I got from some cookies I bought. What? All right. Here comes the next one. Listen. Any ideas? Um. Did you say it sounds like rain? That's right. It's rain, except it's actually onions frying in a pan. Yep. Rain is an easy one to do. A lot of things sound like rain. Sizzling bacon. Dropping rice into a pan. And if you want to add some thunder... Nice, but if you think that's actual thunder, guess again. Any ideas what it is? Hmm. Did you say a sheet of aluminum foil? All right, last one. Let's pretend I was actually a spy sent here to steal all your sound secrets. You just caught me. What would you do? I wouldn't be happy. I'd probably give you a few of these. Oh, ow! And a couple of these. Ah, uh, okay, enough. And one of these. Hiya! That probably sounded like she beat me up pretty good. But don't worry. I'm perfectly fine because... I was just hitting two pieces of meat together. And the final knockout punch, I used a phone book. But why recreate sound effects at all? Can't you just record what's happening during filming? Not always. Some sounds like fire are safer to fake later so no one gets burned. Ooh, hot. Other sounds like a broken bone, you can't do for real. So if I wanted to recreate a skateboarding accident, I'd snap a popsicle stick close to the mic. Listen. Whoa! Ah, my arm! Just kidding. Amazing work. Thanks for giving us a behind the scenes look. Uh, listen to the world of Foley art. My pleasure. Pretty wild, huh, kid? Yes! And if you're wondering why it's called Foley art, it's named after Jack Foley. Call him. Action. Who created the idea of using one thing to sound like another when he worked at Universal Pictures in the 1920s, when movies stopped being silent. In other words, he invented movie sound effects. Foley walked over 5,000 miles creating the perfect sounding footsteps for actors like Marlon Brando, Laurence Olivier, and Jimmy Cagney over his four decades in the business. Whoa. Now that you know how it's done, try making your own sound effects. All you need is something to record with. I can't wait. Any smartphone will do the trick and some ordinary stuff lying around the house. Need a galloping horse? Try tapping two shoes on the floor. Need a swarm of bees? Try using a handheld fan. Need a dinosaur hatching from an egg? Just crumple up an ice cream cone. With some creative thinking and a little imagination, you can make it sound like you're anywhere in the universe without ever leaving home. Bonsoir, monsieur. How you doing? Got any of that hot cocoa left? Oui, monsieur. Merci.
Thanks for listening to Who's Smarter? This episode, Sound Effects, was written by Jason Williams and voiced by Jenna Hoban, Sheffield Chastain, April Cantor, Kim Davis, and Josh Hahn. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. Who Smarted was recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studio. Theme song by Brian Suarez. Lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. New episodes of Who Smarted every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And free curriculum and activities available on whosmarted.com. This has been an Atomic Entertainment production. Who Smarted?